So we do a lot more life support. So whenever patients need medications or drugs administered to them, um, they need a heart monitor put on them, anything like that, that's when a paramedic gets involved. Anything that has to do with airway. So this is my here. Actually, you want to pull the stretcher around? Yeah. I'm going to pull the stretcher around so I can have something to put it on. paramedic bag. This is everything I need for um, life-saving equipment, okay? This outside part, this is all my airway stuff. Um, we can put in breathing tubes for patients that need an airway, okay? So if the patient stops breathing or is not breathing adequately, um, we can put breathing tubes in for them, okay? Yep, through the mouth or the nose, depending on how we do it. Um, so here's the tube that we put in. You guys want to see those? Those are what the breathing tubes look like that we put into the patients, okay? And these are the, this is the tool that we use to insert the tubes. This is how we open up the mouth, okay? It's not as gross as it seems. It's not that bad, okay? Now, say, say we're working on a patient and we're trying to get an airway and we can't, say there's a reason that we can't see where we need to place the tube, okay? A lot of different things can, can affect whether or not we can see where we're placing the tube. It could be anatomy, um, it could be um, secretion, blood, or vomit in the airway. Um, we have another tool that we use now for like video games. We have some video games, Lakers. This is good for you. Device. Nice thinking. This is our camera that we use. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we. This is the, where the camera comes out. There, it's all fiber optic. There's the glass. Okay, and then we can now put the tube in, and now it's a lot easier to see what we're doing. Okay. Um, one of the things that the other class was interested in, and didn't get too grossed out, we'll see about you guys. Um, you guys know about IVs, putting in IVs on people, right? So that's how we get most of our meds. This is the IV equipment here, okay? This is the, the fluid and the IV catheters, okay? But there are patients that we try and try and try and we can't get an IV on, okay? Um, in those cases, when it's extreme emergency and we have to get them medications into them, um, we use what's called an easy IO drill, okay? And we actually use the drill to drill into their um, into the bone marrow on their leg, okay, or their shoulders, okay. And when we do that, we can introduce the fluids or drugs right to the patient as they need it. All right. <laughs> no, that's actually not because um, there's actually not painful because there's no nerve endings in the bone. So it's 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 kind of if you think of it, I saw in the last class. Think of it like. Um, if you've had citrus before, after they numb it up, it, you feel like a pressure, but it doesn't feel like painful. That's what that's kind of what it's like. So you just know that something's going on, but it doesn't hurt. Um, so the medications that we give our patients, they all come IV, okay? That's why it's important that we get an IV on our patients. So these are the medications that we give our patients, okay? They come in many different sizes, many different varieties. Um, some of them come as liquid form. Some of them even come as, as a powdered medication and then we have to mix it up to make it a liquid, okay? Many different types of drugs here. All of them are pretty much emergency medicine. The great thing about my job, and I was telling the other crew, is that I get to know a little bit about everything, because you never know what you're gonna get. You can, at one minute, you can be restarting somebody's heart who stopped, the next minute you can be delivering a baby, um, you can go to a trauma, yes. You get, I think the best part is you get a little stork pin to put on your, your uniform to look all cool for about a week until you lose it. Because <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about, you lose things, I do. Um, what about if we can't put the breathing tube in, right? And we're trying and we're trying to get a, to be able to um, breathe for the patient. We can do a surgical crike, um, crike on the patient, or we can do it with a needle, which is a little bit easier. They're called a quick trach and you actually would just insert that right into the patient's throat and that's how we breathe for them if, if we can. I know, it sounds terrible. You get to practice a lot on like animals before you do it for real. Yeah. No? Like, Dude, no one cares about you guys in the movie but everyone cares if they kill the dog. You, I know that is true, but you want you also want the, the person providing care for your loved one to have experience, right? Yeah. So, 
Well, that's why in a lot of, uh, how do the med schools learn their patients? They, they use cadavers, donated bodies to science, right? So it's the same concept. All right, next we'll show you guys our heart monitor. You can get it all in there. This weighs about 50 pounds of equipment. So this is our heart monitor that John has here. You guys know what this does? Anybody know? It sends electricity to the heart. Yep. Nope, not to start it, to stop it. A lot of people have a mix. So actually, um, it's a it's a concept that people don't get very often. When you guys see the television, you see the flat line, and they say clear shock, and then they get a heartbeat. That's not how it's working actually. Um, when your heart heart runs on electricity, right? It's electrical impulses that cause done by chemicals, sodium, potassium, moving in and out of the heart, right? Well, when those get all out of whack and there's electricity coming from many different areas, kind of think of it, everything is disorganized and nothing's really working right, okay? What we do is we send electricity at a higher energy through the heart to stop the heart altogether, right? And what happens is your, your heart has an internal pacemaker that will kick in on its own. So what we hope is that we stop the heart and the pacemaker takes over and is able to control the heart rate at that point. So that's what we're doing is we can watch your rhythm on the screen, we diagnose what rhythm you're in, and then we can send electricity through. Have you guys heard of a pacemaker before? Yeah. Okay, so if your heart's beating too slow, we can also use this as a pacemaker, um, where we can pace your heart at a certain rate to get it going a little bit faster. Um, we also do EKGs. Have you guys heard of an EKG before? Where we take a big picture of your heart, all different areas, we diagnose heart attacks. Um, if we do that in the field, we use this gadget right here. It's a telephone from the 80s, cell phone. Hello. Um, we send it over this wirelessly to the hospitals that we're going to. Um, when the hospitals get on the other end, they read the EKG that we send to them and they say, yes, they are having a heart attack. And when we get to the hospital, we do not take you to the emergency room, we take you to the operating room. And you go right in for your procedure. So we get to skip the middleman. The faster we can get that clot cleaned out and get blood flowing into your heart, there's no damage. So a lot of people now are leaving the hospital after heart attack without any long lasting damage from the heart attack itself. All because of and we have a balloon, we call it a paramedic to balloon time because they actually use a balloon internally to open up the, the blockage. We try to do that in less than 90 minutes. From the time you call 911 to the time the surgery's ended, we do it in 90 minutes. So we work very quickly and under a lot of, a lot of stress trying to get them there to that hospital in a, a proficient time. Um, one last piece of equipment here I'll show you guys. This is one of our newest pieces of equipment. This is, a, anybody heard of a ventilator before? Yeah. So this is how we breathe for our patients who aren't breathing. We put them on the machine to mechanically ventilate them. Um, one of the other things that we do, which is really important right now, is if you're having trouble breathing, say asthma, COPD. Shoot, I'm taking a gum out. Don't tell anybody who that's on there. <laughs> uh, she got me on film too. Asthma, COPD, anything like that. Um, sometimes we don't want to put you on a ventilator because it can be very hard to get you off. We put the breathing tube on, it's very hard to get them to come off of that later on. So what we do is we hook the hoses up and we actually do it with a mask outside of the body. And we can, it's called non-invasive, and we can give you oxygen or pressures to help you breathe. So maybe if you go on that for 12 hours to give your, time, your lungs time to settle down, so a lot of times you don't have to be intubated. And that saved a lot of people from having to have long uh, admissions to the ICU and long hospital stays. And that we brought out to the hospital, it's pre-hospital now. So, I'll let you guys take a walk through the ambulance and see what we have. We'll go in the, from the back here. Um, so does anybody know how we get patients out? Say you're up on a third floor, how do we get you out of the house? But unfortunately, the court's frowned upon that, so. <laughs> So this is called a stair chair. We use this to bring people down flights of stairs. Okay, so it looks like a normal chair, right? So what we do is on the back, we deploy the tracks. And we can actually use this and it climbs down the stairs with us. And this is how we get people down flights of stairs without um, using a lot of energy on us. Yep, I'm carrying them. Because back that's how we used to do it was carry them. Wait, that goes on the stairs? Yep, yep, it slides right down the stairs. So we, I, if I was above it, I would hold it from right here. And it would slide right down the stairs. It's, it's a trust game. You guys did that, right? 
step up and walk through, um, you'll notice on the left hand side there's a lot of medical equipment on the top shelf like bandages and everything and then in the middle is a lot of drugs and medications and IV equipment. And then in the back corner when you get through there, look, you'll see there's a seat in the back and then there's a board right next to them with all the light buttons and all the medical equipment that we use. That's the captain's chair. So if you were respiratory, that's where they would sit to take care of the respiratory patients. There are bariatric ambulances, yeah, so if a patient is very large and they don't fit in a regular ambulance, we have two bariatric ambulances that will go and pick up the patients who are obese. Yep. They're newer, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Come on in. <laughs> She's like, let me in. Oh, I said yes. Just wants to meet. Just go through and walk out the other side. <laughs> 